are you ready to learn how to actually start a remote business in 2024? If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Lian Lai. I run a virtual assistant agency here in the Philippines called 2XU and I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now in the last four years of having 2XU so far and having it be fully remote as in I can travel anywhere and I've been able to just run my business, do sales calls, do client meetings, do calls with the team basically all virtually and online. I even went a trip with my assistant overseas and things were still running. That is a goal that I have for you is getting you to the point where you have a remote business. So I want to walk you through step by step of what I would do. And it's funny because I probably will start another remote business in 2024. If I had to restart 2XC all over again, what are things I would put in place so I can keep having basically the remote business life that I have now? Now, the first thing that I recommend is don't quit. Now, what I mean by this is if you have right now a full-time work, don't quit it just to start this business. Now, I always recommend this with people because starting a business you think that the next day you're going to get a client, but in reality, you're not. You're going to try and fail and try and fail. You're trying to figure out what you want to do, what you want to offer, so on and so forth. So if you do have a full-time gig right now and you want to start your own remote business, don't quit. Don't quit until I'll tell you in a little bit in the video of when to basically quit, but don't quit just yet because it's going to be essential for you to still have a way to maintain basically your life without you basically going to debt because you've been starting your business. So that's the first thing. Next is you want to go ahead and create your MVP or your minimum viable product or service. So you want to decide a few things here. Do you want to sell a product? That means that you will have to take care of like shipping, logistics, all of that. And that one's usually a little bit harder to do fully remote. Yes, you can do most of it like online, but if you are going to be shipping a physical product or you're taking care of suppliers, things like that, it might be a little bit harder. And of course we have the service-based business, which is what we've done with 2XU, where we hire and manage and train executive assistants for our clients all over the world. So those are one of the first things that you have to decide on is just the product or service. Now the product can also be digital products. So for me, I also sell Notion templates on the side. I have sold books basically on the side. So it's digital products, that's another thing as well. So again, decide, those are the first two things that you have to decide on is product, digital products, or maybe physical products and services. So both don't really have a pros and cons. It's going to be up to you and what it is that you want to do. Maybe you stumbled into something that you want to create a business into. So on creating your MVP, you want to create the minimal, the, the smallest thing that you can say like, Hey, now I can, I have something that I can give to someone. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a big thing. When I started to XU, I literally just said, yeah, I'll hire and manage your VA for you. That's literally what we did. Now we have like operations, we have systems, we have so many other assets that we've built in the last four years. But we literally just started with that of like, we're going to hire and manage your VA for you. That's it. And along the way, we figured out a lot of things afterwards. So what is that minimum viable product for you? What's the smallest thing that you can just sell just so you can test out if you have a market? Now, as you're building out your MVP, you want to also refine, of course, who your target audience is. If you say that you're, everyone's your target audience, no one is your target audience. So pick one niche or industry that you want to start going into. Basically, even easier if you go into a micro industry or micro niche. And the reason for that, it's then easier for you to build out your product. So for example, for 2XC, when we started, we were targeting a lot of business coaches, authors, because those are the people I worked with before I started 2XC. So it was easy for me to know like, oh yeah, a business coach would need their assistant to do X, Y, and Z, so on and so forth. So just figuring that out for you of like, what are the clients that you want? Want to target next is you want to get a client that's it like you literally the steps has been don't quit create an MVP so far so there's a little bit of steps in there and then get a client nothing else matters in your business you don't need to get a license you don't need to get X Y and Z if you don't know how to get a client or that your business that is actually something that people will want to buy this is a mistake that I've seen so many people make is basically they set up their LLCs they set up you know an office they set up you know they start hiring people but they actually have never gotten a client. And for 2XU, we've been lucky enough that while I was still running this different business, I got my first client in 2XU, and the moment that I got that money, that's when I considered myself that I had another business. So try to look at it from that point of view that you don't actually have a business until someone gives you money in exchange for your product or your service. Now, of course, you can do this in different ways. One is just outright talking about your offer. 
two is looking at people who need help in your particular niche or the particular problem basically that you are solving. So this could be going on Reddit, this could be going on Facebook groups, this could be just offering maybe your services for free and then charging them later on. So depending on how you want to build this out, getting a client is your step three. So don't quit build it and then sell it because again none of this matters the next couple of steps won't matter until you are able to actually prove that your business is something that someone else is willing to pay for next step get a client again now sounds weird but it actually is the only thing next possible step for this is it's not enough to just have one client or two or three you have to keep selling your business, your product or your service to again, keep improving it as well because it's hard to get feedback or know what to do better at if you don't have enough number of clients or customers coming in into your business. Again, it's more about just proving that this is something that you can keep doing. So keep working on basically building out and this is the next step is building out your funnel so then you can create basically a client or customer experience for them. So inside of 2XU, when I first got my, I think my second or my third client, I started building out that funnel of like, okay, they'll get this lead generation product basically, and then they'll be able to sign up a call with me. Uh, we do an interview call afterwards. Once they say yes, then we start looking for the process for their you know, assistant and then so on and so forth. So start building step by step what that funnel and journey for your clients look like. So then it's easy for you to start doing the process of creating systems in your business basically, which is the next step is building out those systems for yourself. So this could just be you on a mind map that you have a good way to funnel people through. It could be using tools like Trello or Notion where you can easily start seeing on a computer basically, not on a paper, of what the process of your business looks like. This could also be creating starting point procedures where you are writing down step by step how you're doing things. And yes, at this point it might be just you, but it's also to make it easy for yourself to just grab things. So for me, I started creating email templates for the business. This was before I had anyone else like in the admin team I was creating templates, I was creating walkthroughs because I needed a standard way of how I'm going to be showing up basically or giving the service to our clients. Next is build out your org chart. Now, as at this point, basically, you would have already have some momentum in inside of your business. You know how to get clients, you know how to close them, you know how to get in leads. It might not be consistent yet, but you can see some return basically in the efforts that you're doing. So building out your org chart is great because then you start seeing, okay, what if my business grew to like 20 clients? How many employees do I need then? What if it grew to 50 or 100? How many employees do I need then? So then for this, you are more intentional about the people that you're hiring rather than hiring out of necessity. And I've made this mistake before myself of just hiring because I really needed this position like or this role filled and failed in the way. So in a lot of ways, you have to be intentional in hiring and who it is who's going to be your assistant, who's going to be your manager, who's going to do X, Y, and Z in the business. And again, it's all about just that intention that you're not just hiring because you just need a person now. You've started to create a vision for your business of where you want to be and who you want to be on your team. So this is also kind of a little bit building out the culture of how you want that to look like. You know, do you want to be the flexible time or people working at certain hours, so on and so forth. So you're building out that vision for your business. Next is at this point, hopefully you have some momentum. You want to start getting feedback from your clients, especially if they've been doing and working with you for a while or they've gotten your product. So then you can then do the next step of upgrading your product and service. So if you have a product based business, you're technically still doing some sort of service like customer service and taking care of them. And even if you are a service based business, you basically have a product that you're giving to your client as well to for them to be able to get the results that they want. So from the feedback that you're starting to get, you want to start upgrading and looking at your systems and your funnel and everything else that we just talked about and start upgrading bits and pieces of it so then it's just a little bit smoother it doesn't have to feel like every day you're just kind of panicking because you don't know what to do next and lastly for truly being a remote business and not having to go to an office you want to start hiring slow and firing fast now i know this sounds a little bit harsh but this is a lesson that i have had to learn in the harshest way and is hire slow so don't just hire someone just because they have the perfect qualifications and have like perfect you know cvs and everything like that you want to hire slow you want to integrate them into your business slower but if they don't seem to be a fit 
considering basically letting them go. And again, this seems a little bit harsh, but it is the reality when you're starting to grow a business, especially as a startup, is you can't afford, literally you can't afford having bad people on your team. You can't afford having people who can distract you from doing the things that you want to focus on in the business because they're, you have to reprimand them, you have to redirect them, you have to do X, Y, and Z with them. You can't afford it at this point. So hire slow, fire fast is basically just a good way to think about it of like, if this is not a fit for them as an opportunity, there might be a better fit for them in other places as well. And same thing for you. There's another employee out there who will want to work with you, who is a better match for you than this person. Again, it's not really anything that's personal. It's just that at this moment, you can't afford to have bad people in your business. And later on, when your business is a little bit bigger, you basically might have a better way to manage people who might not have been a fit in the first place, but they could be in the later on. So it's essential that you are thinking about the culture of your business in the long run because this is one of the ways that when you're running a remote business that can make or break it because culture is basically everything you guys don't have an office you don't have a way to bond outside of zoom calls or slack messages so having the right people on the team is really essential now it is only when you hire your first employee that you might start thinking of then quitting your job. So I, I took you guys through this whole journey and the essential part is, is when you can afford to hire someone, you can afford to have someone help you out in the business, that is the time that you probably don't need your job anymore because you've built out your business to the point where again, you can pay for someone else's time. So that is the only time probably that I'll say, yep, it's now time for you to leave your job because you have now your business is building out to the point where you don't need that income, basically the consistent income for that. And honestly, it's also just a little bit of leaving you in a better place of instead of quitting right as you're starting your business and then needing to find a job later on, at least you are in better terms and you're also able to give your boss a better notice because they see that you've been building this and it doesn't have to be ending basically the relationship in bad terms. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below what kind of remote business are you seeing that you want to start in 2024? I would love to know. And if you still haven't yet, make sure to hit subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home. And happy new year, by the way. Uh, and you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here. Hope you guys have an amazing day. I'm with Small Steps Matters and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!